20.1 Circular motion with friction When an object travels in a horizontal circle, a net force is required to cause the object to change direction. The change in direction won't happen unless there's some kind of force changing the motion of the object. This all comes down to Newton's first law. Newton's first law tells us that objects tend to stay at a constant speed, traveling in a straight line, unless a net force acts on them. For circular motion, the object travels in a circle because its velocity experiences a perpendicular force continuously changing its direction. Friction causes objects to travel in a horizontal circle. In the case of a car traveling on a road, friction pushes on the wheels of the car as the wheels rotate and causes a force that allows the car to travel in a horizontal circle. In this case, the force of friction causes a centripetal motion. Looking at this from a formula standpoint, the centripetal force is mv squared over r. And this equals the force of friction, which is mu fn. The normal force is usually the force of gravity, which is mass times g. So mv squared over r equals mu mg. And notice that m appears on both sides, so it can be cancelled out. We could also look at the other circular motion formula, which is m4 pi squared r over t equals mu fn. This means we have m 4 pi squared r over t squared equals mu mg and again mass appears on both sides so we can cancel it out. In icy conditions circular motion can be a problem. If you're traveling too fast you'll spin out and you might not make the curve. If your speed doesn't match the curve of the corner you could also end up just continuing in a straight line, causing you to fly off the road. Icy conditions are quite dangerous. For example, on an icy day, the coefficient of friction on a road is 0 0.01. The curve of a corner has a radius of 10 meters. What should the speed limit be? So in the case of a curve on a road, the speed has to match the speed of the curve. So if we've got a car traveling a corner, if the speed is correct to match the friction of the road, the car will manage to travel perfectly around the curve. If the speed isn't right, it can either travel right off the curve or spin out over turning on the curve. That's why most turns have speed limits. We can calculate what the speed should be by using this formula. 
centripetal force, mv squared over r equals mu mg, mass crosses out on both sides. We can rearrange for v, v equals square root mu g r. This is 0 0.01 times 9.81 times 10. This gives us a speed of 0 0.99 meters per second or 3.6 kilometers per hour.